how many pounds of ore are required? Let's see if these numbers are even close. And I'll explain further. Now, that shouldn't take you long. Uh, <laughs> it's going to take me a minute. Uh, okay. A single electric car battery weighing 1,000 pounds requires extracting and processing some 500,000 pounds of materials. That's the first thing that pops up on Google. And what is the source of that? That would be the Manhattan Institute. My God, then, I think these numbers are correct. I was sent this, and I don't know if by mistake or if the guy who sent it to me, Jim Becker, is a GLer. Uh, I found myself reading it. It's a it's a tutorial on batteries. It's absolutely eye opening. Much of it we already know. Much of it is brand new to me, and I would imagine most of us. He writes, prior to my career selling high tech printed circuit boards, I started in sales with the company in Long Island, New York, packaging uninterrupted power supplies utilizing nickel cadmium storage batteries. Somehow I still receive tech bulletins and publications from the industry and recently received this and thought it may be interesting to others. What is a battery? I think Tesla said it best when they called it an energy storage system. That's important. They do not make electricity. They store electricity produced elsewhere, primarily by coal, uranium, natural gas powered plants or diesel fuel generators. So, to say an electric vehicle is a zero emission vehicle is not at all valid. Also, since 40% of the electricity generated in the U.S. is from coal-fired plants, it follows that 40% of the EVs on the road are coal-powered. Einstein's formula, E equals MC2, tells us that it takes the same <laughs> amount of energy <laughs> wait, 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 squared. Wait, wait, you. No, nope, <laughs> stop, 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 stop. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again. Please continue. No, no, no. Repeat the, the last sentence, please. Einstein's formula, E equals MC squared, <laughs> tells you. us it takes the same amount of energy to move a 5,000-pound gasoline-driven automobile a mile as it does an electric one. I believe MC2 is Crackhead's co-host. Right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Say that part again. Yeah, That's right. fascinating. I missed that <laughs> earlier when we were... According to Einstein, it takes the same, same amount, amount of energy to move a 5,000-pound gasoline-driven automobile one mile as it does an electric one. That's good to know. Thank you. The only question, again, is what produces the power. To reiterate, it does not come from the battery. The battery is only the storage device, like a gas tank in a car. There are gotcha. two orders of batteries, rechargeable and single-use. The most common single-use batteries are A, AA, AAA, CD, and 9-volt and lantern types. Those dry cell species use zinc, manganese, lithium, silver oxide, or zinc and carbon to store electricity chemically. Please note they all contain toxic heavy metals. Rechargeable batteries only differ in their internal materials, usually lithium ion, nickel metal oxide, and nickel cadmium. The United States uses 3 billion of these two battery types a year, and most are not recycled. They end up in landfills. California is the only state which requires all batteries to be recycled. If you throw your small, used batteries in the trash, here's what happens to them. All batteries are self-discharging. That means even when not in use, they leak tiny amounts of energy. You have likely ruined a flashlight or two from an old, ruptured battery. Yes, I have. When a battery runs down and can no longer power a toy or light, you think of it as dead. Well, it isn't. It continues to leak small amounts of electricity. As the chemicals inside it run out, pressure builds inside the battery's metal casing, and eventually it cracks. The metals left inside then ooze out. The ooze in your ruined flashlight is toxic, and so is the ooze that will inevitably leak from every battery in a landfill. All batteries eventually rupture. It just takes rechargeable batteries, batteries longer to end up in the landfill. In addition to dry cell batteries, there are also wet cell ones used in automobiles, boats, and motorcycles. The good thing about those is 90% of them are recycled. Unfortunately, we do not yet know how to re uh, recycle single-use ones properly, but that is not half of it. For those of you excited about electric cars and a green revolution, I want you to take a closer look at batteries and also windmills and solar panels. These three technologies share what we call environmentally destructive embedded costs. 
Everything manufactured has two costs, embedded costs and operating costs. Wouldn't you love to hear Kamala tell us about this? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. I will explain embedded costs using a can of baked beans as my subject. In this scenario, baked beans are on sale, so you jump in your car and head for the grocery store, and sure enough, there they are on the shelf for $1.75 a can. As you head to the checkout, you begin to think about the embedded costs in the can of beans. The first is the cost of diesel fuel the farmer used to plow the field, till the ground, harvest the beans, and transport them to the food processor. Not only is his diesel fuel an embedded cost, so are the cost to build the tractors, combines, and trucks. In addition, the farmer might use a nitrogen fertilizer made from natural gas. Next is the energy cost of cooking the beans, heating the building, transporting the workers, and paying for the vast amounts of electricity used to run the plant. The steel can holding the beans is also an embedded cost. Making the steel can requires mining taconite, shipping it by boat, extracting the iron, placing it in a coal-fired blast furnace, and adding carbon. Then it's back on another truck to take the beans to the grocery store. Finally, add in the cost of the gasoline for your car. A typical electric vehicle battery weighs 1,000 pounds, about the size of a travel trunk. It contains 25 pounds of lithium, 60 pounds of nickel, 44 pounds of manganese, 30 pounds of cobalt, 200 pounds of copper, and 400 pounds of aluminum, steel, and plastic. Inside are over 6,000 individual lithium-ion cells. It should concern you that all those toxic components come from mining. For instance, to manufacture each EV auto battery, you must process 25,000 pounds of brine for the lithium, 30,000 pounds of ore for the cobalt, 5,000 pounds of ore for the nickel, and 25,000 pounds of ore for the copper. All told, you dig up 500,000 pounds of the Earth's crust for just one battery. Wow. 68% of the world's cobalt, a significant part of a battery, comes from the Congo. Their mines have no pollution controls, and they employ children who die from handling this toxic material. Should we factor in these diseased kids as part of the cost of driving an electric car? I'd like to leave you with these thoughts. California is built, and I don't know who wrote this. California is building the largest battery in the world near San Francisco, and they intend to power it from solar panels and windmills. They claim this is the ultimate in being green, but it isn't. This construction project is creating an environmental disaster, and I'll explain. The main problem with solar arrays is the chemicals needed to process, process silicate into the silicon used in the panels. To make sure enough silicon requires processing it with hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, hydrogen fluoride, trichlorothane, and acetone. In addition, they also need gallium, arsenide, copper indium gallium, diselenide, and cadmium telluride, which are also highly toxic. Silicon dust is a hazard to the workers and the panels cannot be recycled. Windmills are the ultimate in embedded costs and environmental destruction. Each weighs 1,688 tons, the equivalent of 23 houses. It contains 1,300 tons of concrete, 295 tons of steel, 48 tons of iron, 24 tons of fiberglass, and the hard-to-extract rare earths neodymium, praseodymium, and dysprosium. Each blade weighs 81,000 pounds and will last 15 to 20 years, at which time it must be replaced. We cannot recycle used blades. Sadly, both solar arrays and windmills kill birds, bats, sea life, and migratory insects. There may be a place for these technologies, but you must look beyond the myth of zero emissions. I predict EVs and windmills will be abandoned once the embedded environment cost of making and replacing them becomes apparent. Going green may sound like the utopian ideal in our easily espoused catchy buzzwords, but when you look at the hidden and embedded costs realistically with an open mind, you can see that going green is more destructive to the Earth's environment than meets the eye. Hmm. Wow. That's a heap of learning there.